All right. There's two types of distribution in this section, in this chapter. Chapter 7, two types of distribution. 10% is uniform distribution, 90% is normal distribution. Now you've been drawing normal distribution since I've been showing you the mean and the standard deviation. The reason I've been showing you to been getting to draw the mean and the standard deviation is so when you get to this section, you automatically know how to do it. All right? So, but the uniform distribution is different. I have to show it to you because it always has to do with the only variable that we cannot control. And what's the only variable that we cannot control? Time. Even though some women especially try to control time, you have 40-year-old women dressing like 18-year-olds. They try to, or they have too much makeup on, look like influences. But anyway, they try to control time, and they look like a what? Fool. So don't try to control time. It doesn't work. Uniform distribution. Why isn't there any variance? Why does it look like a block? I just said it. We can't control what? So if we can't control time, there's no what? Variation. There's no variation. It's called uniform. Okay? So the first thing you do is you draw a box. And that's the yellow part. The second thing you do is you label the x-axis. The x-axis will be given, so you need to write that down. X-axis will be given. Don't ignore the writing. I'm not going by the writing. I'm just using the pictures. Okay, so the x-axis will be given. The area of the box is equal to 1. So at this point right here, you want to draw this. Just ignore, the, ignore this and ignore this. This right here is equal to 1. It doesn't matter. It's always going to be one. Excuse me, I've got to pull up the whiteboard. Somebody close it out. I dare somebody missing my computer. Come on, you can do it. Don't, don't, don't look at it because going up behind, just, we're just drawing a picture right now and waiting for the computer to come up. Okay. Now, just ignore this and ignore this for right now. Whether it's a curve, whether it's uniform distribution. The probability percentage or area, they're all called the same thing in this book, in this book, is going to be equal to one. So you may get a you may get a problem that says the area under the curve is blah 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 or so it may say the percentage or it may say the percentile. All of those are the same thing in this in this chapter. All right. So if they give you a P sub 75, what does that mean? The 75th what? Percentile. So that would be somewhere in here. Because that's one quarter, that's two quarters, that's what? Three quarters. Three quarters is 75%. All right? If they give you P of six, 
That is the what? The sixth percentile. Okay, and so on. So when you're dealing with normal distribution or uniform distribution, the area under the curve is assumed to be one. Now, or 100%. Some books say 100%. But most of your probability and statistics books will, will say one because everything in probability and statistics is based on the decimal from zero to one. So that's why it's one. Okay? Now, sometimes they're going to give you, or every time, anytime you have a couple of these on the test, and the test will say you have a teacher that usually finishes class 10 minutes within 10 minutes of the next hour. In other words, uh, usually class lasts 50 minutes. In a regular one hour class. Okay, your class is a hour and a half, so we're not talking about that type, we're talking about a just regular 50 minute class, which with the break is 60 minutes. All right, and class usually, and you can say 45 minutes. So you have a teacher that usually cuts it off at 45 minutes. And the probability, you know, is based on that 45 minutes. And then they say, what is the probability that that same teacher will cut it off at 55 minutes or above? In other words, what is the probability that that teacher may go within five minutes of the hour? Okay? In other words, they run over. Well, the first thing you got to do is find the height of the box. So, go over here, and you say, one, find the height of the box. Now, box means uniform distribution. So, first thing you do is you put the, down here, and in this case, it would be 60 minutes, okay? Because the class is 60 minutes long. And they say that in the, they say that in the problem, all right? They say that the probability of the class in the last 45 minutes, blah, 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 they say this is a 60 minute class. So, the height of the box is based on your old, what's the area of a rectangle? Length times width, base times height, whatever you want to call it. So, 1 is equal to 60 times W, or height, or whatever you want to call it. And then divide by 60, divide by 60, I'll call it length times height. Okay? So the height is equal to 1 over 60. And that's how you get that number. Okay? Now we're asked to the second part of the question. The second part of the question says, what is the probability that your teacher will go 55 minutes or above. In other words, go up to the last five minutes of class. Well, 55 minutes is right here, correct? Okay. So you want to know above, you want to know this area or probability, or percentage, or percentile, or whatever. So you can go back to area equals length times width, or length times height, or length times height. You've got the height, what's the width? What's this width right here between 55 and 60? Five. So area equals length, which is 5, times the height, which is 1 over 60. And somebody divide 5 by 60, what do you get? 
Just give me two decimal points. I'm sorry, what? Point one two. So there's a 12% chance or point one two probability that your teacher will go above 55 minutes. And that's how you do uniform. What? Who said point twelve? Thank you. Point what? Thank you. So you got an eight percent chance that your teacher's going to go above five minutes. The reason for this, nobody's ever going to ask you if your teacher's going to go above five minutes. That's not the whole point. The whole point is that you understand that time is uniform. That's why it's easy to figure. Because it doesn't change, even though some people try to change it. And if you don't believe me, wait till you have a child and you go to a cheerleading competition or you go to a dance competition. You'll understand what I'm talking about. The entertainment is not the kids, the entertainment is the moms. Okay. And let one of them get mad. Not as funny as the moms. Especially the ones that dress like they're 18 years old and they're not. Oh, yeah. Well, that's funny. And then you have the child that should not be on stage because they're like six months old and they don't know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> I'm sorry. They should not be on stage. I would not let my daughter go. My wife raised all kinds of sin. You need that. She don't know how to freaking walk yet. <laughs> yes, what time? What day? What night do they have? Tuesday. I think it might be Friday, Tuesday. I'm not sure. But anyway, um. One mom, she wanted to get up there and do karaoke, but she brought her daughter with her. So it was like, you, you wanted to do it, but you brought your daughter so that people would laugh or yeah. whatever. And then after that, every mom that went up there and their child was with them brought their child up there with them. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> yeah. Entertainment. Yeah. I'll have to go on Friday night. Why did I what? They're being a friend. They being a friend. They being a friend. A parent is supposed to be a friend. They're not supposed to be a parent. They're not supposed to beat their kids. No, they're not supposed to discipline their kids. They're friends. Idiots. Anyway, that's how you do. That's how you do. Is Target your friend, or does he discipline you? You do not want to take Target with you to Wildwood. Yes, ma'am. Good. So they're going to tell you probably the same thing that I told you. No, they're not. Yeah, they're not going to tell you that. They're going to say, take the easiest classes. No, I'm sorry. It's going to be like a sheet. Mm -hmm. Is everybody else checked on their advisors? Yeah. Okay, wait till, wait till December for those of you that try to get a students. Wait till December and come up here and try to find an advisor when everybody's gone. <laughs> try that. See how that works out for you. I'm not talking to the high school students because you're going to be, like you said, you're going to have a meeting. They're going to take care of it. Don't let them. Don't let them try to talk you into going into underwater firefighting meeting because some advisors do that. Oh, you don't like math? Okay, well let's take underwater firefighting. And then you get mad because you can't find a job when you get out of high, when you get out of college. And then you won't get free tuition from Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. Okay, next slide. Okay, uniform distribution. I want you to know about it. I want you to be able to do it, but it's not that big a deal. It's only 10% of your test. 
Here's another, well, there's an example right there. What is the probability that it's between 15 and 30 minutes? And boom, there it is. What's 15 to 30? 15 times 160. Somebody take your calculator, and not guess this time, and take 15 and divide it by six, uh, divide it by 60. What do you get? Should get 0.25. So you got a 25% possibility that whatever they're asking is going to happen. Now, the normal distribution, and what I usually tell students to do on this test, and I'll I don't know why. Well, I just tried to get out of the slideshow, dork. Okay, there. Before I even start this section, I tell students to do this, which, let's see, there's 30 in here, two of you will do it. And that is, with all of the questions we're going to be doing in this chapter, you're going to have to draw the normal distribution curve like 500 times to understand what you're doing. So what I tell students to do is take one sheet of copy paper, divide it into eight slots, six slots, whatever you want to do, and get a get a image from Google. You can pull them up and you know it all I know some of y'all it takes a lot of work. It takes a couple of hits on the computer, but you know it takes what, fifteen seconds out of your day? That's a lot of work. But anyway, for the 28 people that's not going to do this, go to Google and pull up normal distribution with uh, Z. An image. And there's a good one right there. If you don't want the percentages, you can go down. I'm trying to find the one I usually use, but I don't see it right now. Sometimes. So I just say again with Z. Z score. You could use one like this one. Save it. And then pull it up in, bring it in, import into your word processor, and put that on there eight times or six times in these little in the little uh, slots that I told you and then run you about 10 copies of this piece of paper okay you're gonna get tired by the third time by the third problem I go over you're gonna get tired of drawing this thing and then the five or six students is gonna say well I don't need to draw it. okay don't whine when you get the problem wrong okay so that's a little hint and you pick which one you want, just just do it. All right, that's that. Huh? Well, it's very difficult. It takes, like I say, it takes about five minutes to do, and you have to hit the print button. And uh, Two of y'all will be able to do it. No, you can do whichever one you want. Just pick one and do it. You can draw your own, but you have to draw it like eight times. So... All right, the normal distribution looks like that, and I don't have to go over this very much because I've been harping on it through all the sections, mean and standard deviation. The two sections in this, in the two sections in chapter seven, is going to be one normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, which is your z scores. The second section is going to be much more difficult because it's going to give you a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 25. And those two sections are similar, but they're different. And you're going to have a hard time if you don't pay attention or if you haven't had it before. So that's just normal distribution because in, in regular probability and statistics, you don't see this very much if the teacher doesn't emphasize it. So you may have seen, you may have drawn the normal distribution curve maybe once or twice in another Math 120 class. But in my class, I get you to draw it every single time. So when you get to Chapter 7, you're not going, duh. And it's a whole lot easier in Chapter 7 if you are familiar with it. Okay? Remember, 
The standard deviations are added to the right, subtracted on the left. Skewed right, skewed left, so on. I've already showed you that. I'm not already done, already gone over this. It is symmetric around the mean, you know that. And you add and subtract the standard deviations. The area under the curve is 1. And we're going to talk about the uh, half and all that in just a second. I'm not going over all that. Okay, remember the empirical rule. Remember I told you that you're going to have to know it back in, back in unit 1. That's why. So you might want to write it down again for those of you that didn't do what I said. There it is, the empirical rule. Outside of two standard deviations, it's what? Unusual. Outside three standard deviations, it's what? An outlier. I heard the term outlier used the other night on the news. Anybody know what they're talking about? The polls. One good way to check the polls on the election is go to... Um, clearpolitics.com. I think it's called clearpolitics.com. Because what they do is they make one poll out of the averages of like 25 polls. You've seen it real clear, real clear politics. Now, why do they not use all the polls? Because some of the polls are what? Biased. Outliers. They're biased. And how do you tell that? Well, and in this poll, it's 45-45. In this poll, it's 44-43. In this poll, it's 42-41. And in this poll, it's 65-35. to 35. Okay. Out of those four polls, there's one that's biased. There's one that's not right. So they throw that one out, and they take an average of the other. You also see this in your physics class. When you do a layout, and you're making a like I had to do in one of my classes, take a mouse trap and make a car out of it. And you can't, the only thing you can add to that car is wheels. The only thing you can add to the wrap trap is wheels. And you make a, and you can take a pulley or whatever, you can add the pulley system to it. You ever done this in physics? Okay. Well, anyway, we made we took we got one of the big mouse traps. You know, the big mouse traps that like catches gophers, and it's about that big. And we put some nice tires on it, not my wheels, not the plastic wheels that you put on those cars for Boy Scouts. We put those on there, and we fixed one of those wheels up with a with a with a wooden end of a spool of a uh, thread spool. We cut it and put it on there so it would grab onto the rubber band. And then we put the rubber band around another pulley and then fix it up real nice and then hook that spring that kills the rat. Yeah, it kills. And I, I hate to offend people, but when something snaps on your neck, you're dead. Okay? <laughs> and we took that spring and we hooked it up to a to a string that wrapped around the spool of the thread, the thread spool, which turned the wheel, or the rubber band, which turned the wheel. And sucker, that sucker would do a wheelie almost. I mean, it was, but we ran it like 15 times, but we only took 10, what, 10 readings. Why? Because one time it ran off the road, ran off the little road and ran, we did cross the finish line. And one time it, the, the rubber band came off and stuff like that. So when you're doing a, a run of numbers, you don't keep, you know, the tire that blew out. You don't keep this or you don't keep that because it doesn't fit in with the two standard deviations. Okay? That is not, it's not biasing and it's not messing up your numbers, but you want to keep your numbers what? Tight. You don't want your numbers all over the place because variation messes up your normal curve. That's why you throw out, but you don't do... 10 and throw out 5. You do 15 and you throw out 5. You see what I'm saying? Or you do 25 and you throw out 5. Or you do 105 and throw out 5. You don't you don't do 8 and throw out 7. Okay? 
So that's why you need to know what an outlier looks like. An outlier is way out there. Okay? Which we've already gone all over this, so you should know. Okay. No, I wouldn't give you that on the test. That's just me. I'm looking for a problem that they're still talking about this stuff. Okay, get over it, get over it. All right, this is a good problem. Look at this one. This one says the weights of giraffes are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 2200 and a standard deviation of 200. To so draw a picture of it. Draw three standard deviations and then label it. So, if your mean is 2200, that's going to be right here. And then that's going to be 2400, 2600, and what? And this is going to be 2000, 1800, and 1600. So if you go and buy you a giraffe and it weighs 1,500 pounds, you know what? Somebody had been starving it to death. And then if you buy one that's 3,000 pounds, you know it's got some kind of problem. Okay? You can't say what kind of problem because we might offend it. So that's how you know where the 95%. Now, it says draw a normal curve. We did that. Shaved area under the normal curve to the left of 2100 pounds. So here you got to find 2100. And the 2100 is going to be between 2000 and what? 2200. So it's going to be right here. Now it's going to shade to the left. Now what you're doing is you're saying that the shaded area is the area that equals. 2,100 pounds. In other words, what is the percentage less than 2,100 pounds? And that's what we're going to be doing this whole unit in Chapter 7. It's finding the area under or above 2,100 pounds. And it says, suppose that the area under the normal curve to the left of 2,100 pounds is 0.3085 for two imperfections. Whatever. That means 31% are 2,100 pounds or what? Less. Below or less. Because it's to the left. Then what's the complement of that? Let's say 3, 1. Okay. 0.69 is what? Above. And that's the way you need to read these graphs. Because that's what we're going to be doing through the whole chapter 7. And your chapter... Your unit, whatever unit this is, unit three, your unit three test is going to be a couple of questions from chapter, chapter one, seven, a couple of chapters, a couple of questions from chapter six, a couple of uniform, so that's four. So 
eighty percent of your eighty percent of your test is going to come from chapter seven. Twenty percent of your test is going to come from uniform distribution that I just went over and MPX questions or MP whatever chapter six is. Okay, this is important because. Not that anybody will walk up to you and ask you for this. What will you think will be more plausible? Somebody walking up to you and asking you something like this, or are you seeing this in a presentation? Presentation. And of course, you don't want to be dumb as a box of hammers during a presentation, especially when your boss is in the presentation with you and you ask some DA question about, what is the number on the bottom of you? And you're supposed to be the analyst for quality assurance. It's not something you want to do. Okay? Okay, as soon as I erase all my junk, there's the what we just did. <coughs> now, sometimes they're not going to have these BA numbers. Sometimes they're going to ask you to change it to a Z-score, and that's what we're going to do right now. This is the Z-scores. There's your Z-score formula. We did that back at the end of, I don't know, chapter unit two. I think we did a little bit of Z-scores in. Remember LBJ versus Shaq? That's when you learn this formula. So don't act like you've never seen it before because you have. The other formula I'm going to give you, and this is a Hubertism formula, because I can tell you to solve for the variable that I want, or I could just say x is equal to Oz plus mu. It's easier for you to remember it that way. Oz plus mu. Now, what is x? x is the number that you want or the number that is given. For instance, when we did Shaq versus LBJ, X was the measurement, was the height of Shaq, and X was the height of LBJ. Okay? So X is going to be what is given or what you want. Now, in LBJ versus Shaq, we didn't want their height. It was given to us. X is usually the one that you want or the one that is given. And they'll give you the mean and the standard deviation. They'll give you that, and they'll say mean and standard deviation. But they're not going to say x is equal to 88 inches. They're not going to say that. They're just going to give it to you, or they're going to say what is the height. Okay? So you need to have these two formulas written down, and you need to put stars and highlights beside them because 80% of your questions are going to come with these two formulas. And that's how you draw a normal distribution with z-scores. And I've already showed you that. You know, zero is the mean, and one, two, three, four, five on the right, negative one, two, three, four on the left. That's why it's good for you when you make your sheet and you run 10 or 12 copies of it to have the z-scores already on there. Well, what about the big numbers? Well, you're not going to know the big numbers until you read the what? The question. The z-scores are not going to change. But the numbers, you can add those as you do your problem. Okay. Now, there's two ways to do these problems. One is to look in the table. If you have a book with you, somewhere in the book, there's an index card type thing, and it's got like five tables on it. Anybody got a Anybody got a notebook with them? I mean, not a notebook, but anybody got your book with them? Look somewhere in the book, either in the middle. You know what a placeholder feels like? I mean, a book marker. Well, thumb through, and wherever it thumbs, and there's a thick piece of index card, that's the table I'm telling you to get. Anybody got a book? Where is it? Is it in the back of it? There it is. It's in the back. You might want to get that out, and there's two tables. 
z table. So there's a left, a negative z table, and a, and a positive z table. So they're usually side by side. Or they've incorporated into one. I think this book has incorporated it into one. You'll know it because it covers the whole page. It looks like that right there, I think. Is that a Z table? Look at the top. Which table is it? A what? There's a T table. I'm looking for it now. There it is. It says table. Table five. Yeah. Table five, I think. Yep. Should say Z table. Um, yeah. Table five. Table five, that's your Z table. Now, that's one way to find it. The other way is I show you how to use your calculator. Okay? But I'm not going to show you how to use calculator until I show you how to use the table. So I've always, I'm one of those teachers that believe you've got to know both. So you can make change when you run cash rich. Okay? The table gives the area under the curve. And the four digits, remember, four place values is area. So write that down. Four place values, area. Two place values is a Z score. Now the reason you need to write that down and highlight it is because sometimes you're going to get confused. And sometimes you think the question is giving you an area and it's giving you a Z score. Okay? If they don't give you four decimal values, then it's a Z score. They give you four decimal values or a percentile or a whatever saying that it's probability then you know it's a probability or an area. But if they give you two decimal places, chances are that is a z-score. And I'll show you how to use that in just a minute. Okay, so the first thing you do in this section is or if you've given a mean and a standard deviation that's not zero and one, you've got to find the z-score. And then once you find the z-score, you look it up in the table. Now, how many place values is 1.33? Two with decimal place values right here. 0.33, two decimal points. So that means it's a what? It's a z-score. So you go to your handy-dandy table, which should be next, and you look up the z-score. 1.3, and then you got to add three cent to it. One, two, three, sorry, zero, one, two, three. And then you drop down. And that's the area under that curve, 0 0.9082. How many place values is that? Four. So you know that's an area. So let's go back. The area, if, hold on just a second. If I was to take 1.33, and that's about right in here, how do I know that's 1.33? Because you already got it written out on your sheet that you ran 10 copies of. That's around 1.33 because this is what, right? This right here, hold on a second. I know you got a question. This right here is 1. So if that's 1, this is 1.33. And the area to the left of 1.33 is what? What? 0.9082. Now, there's one thing you need to realize about the, the table. It always gives you the area to the what? To the left. Write that down. And I'll get to your question. I don't want to be the table part. The table only gives you the area to the left of the mark. So if you need to know the right hand side, what is that? One minus the what? Left hand side. Now why would you need to know the right hand side? Well, if you're asked the area above a score or greater than a score. What does that mean on a number line? Above or greater than? Does that mean to the right or to the left of a number? To the right. So if you need the right-hand side area, 
you've got to do one minus the left hand side because the table will not give you that number. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> How do I know what? 1.33. dollar thirty cent plus three. One thirty three. Think of it as money. Okay, that's how you do it. Because this is a dollar thirty. See, this is only in the tens. A dollar thirty, and then you got to add three cents to it. Dollar thirty three. That's how I tell students to do it. Does this tell us the No, it shouldn't. What does it say? I don't know. I don't know this book. I don't even have it. What does it say in the Bible? No, it says T distribution. That's the wrong table. You've got to turn to the right table in this hand. Z table. Table 5. Look at table 5 and look under 1.3 and then go over to, point to 0 0.3 and come down and it should be 9082. Now remember that right hand side is equal to 1 minus left hand side because you're going to forget it. And there's an example right there. What about the area to the right of 1.33? Well, this area over here would be 0 0.0918 because that's 1 minus 0.9082. I really don't like these slides. And these are your, this is just the same, this is the empirical rule only in decimal values. Okay, here we go. Here is a problem that you would see on the test. Um, first of all, I want you to draw a picture. And that means I want you to shade in the area they tell you to shade in. And then I want you to look in the table and find it. And if you don't have a table, just sit there and meditate. I'll pull it up. Who plays Thursday night? Okay, forget it. Oh, uh, I hope it's better than this weekend. There wasn't no good games on except Florida State and Miami. They said it was one other game that was pretty good. Tennessee and Texas a &M. Who won? I was hoping Tennessee would win. Tennessee was actually trying to do good this year. Did you ever ask your dad about going to Atlanta? Did you ever ask him about that? You need to ask him about going to Six Flags and getting lost. He remembers that? I think he had to drive. I'm not sure he was driving or if I was driving. I don't know. It's my car. I have no idea what brought that on. It was his fault. All right, so you draw a picture of it. So you draw your normal distribution curve, and you do the z-scores, and it should look like, well, 
They didn't draw a picture. They just went and found it. Maybe they'll draw a picture afterwards, which is totally bass accurate. That's probably the way they did it. So negative 0.38. So you go to the negative 0.3, which is 30 cent, and then you add what to it? 8 cent, which is 38 cent. And that's 0 0.3520, which is 35.2%. And they're probably going to draw a picture. No, they're not. They're not even going to show you. I'm going to go back and I'm going to do it the way you're supposed to do it. They're just assuming that you already know how to do it. I have a lot of teachers do. Now, the reason this is important is because in the next few questions, they're going to ask you to find the test score that represents the 38th percentile or find the weight that cuts off at 6%. They're going to ask you complicated questions and you're not going to just be able to look it up at the table. You're going to have to draw it out. So, zero, one, two, negative one, negative two. Negative point three eight. Negative point three eight would be right around here, wouldn't it? So they want to know this area where the z score is point three eight. And then you look it up in the table of uh, thirty eight cent. And that's 0 0.38. And what, what was the area that they had? Speak up. 3520. 3520. Because it's four digits. That means it's an area. So that means that this area right here is 0.35. Or the probability that you're going to fall below 0 0.38 is going to be 35% or 0.35. Therefore, more than 0 0.38 is 1 minus 0 0.3520, which means 0 0.6480. Somebody help me. And that would be the right-hand side area. That's the way you're supposed to do it. Not just say, oh, negative point three. I'm just going to look it up in the table. That's the way to do it and not understand what you're doing. But y'all wouldn't do that, would you? All right, do that one. Draw a picture. Two five. That would be where? Right in here. But the problem is they want the right hand side. So that means you gotta find the left hand side and subtract it from what? One. So somebody look up the area to the left of one point two five and tell me what you get. Point eight nine what? Four four. four, four. Somebody sneeze. Don't sneeze in class. All right. So this is this area from here to there. Point eight nine four four. So this area is one minus point eight nine four four. And this is where you people that don't know how to make change, you have no idea what we're doing. 
you know, that's almost 90 cents. So the the answer is going to be around 11 cents, right? For those of you that can make change without using calculator. So it's going to be point what? One zero six five six. Five six. One zero five six. If you're one of those people that you know made a fool of because you don't know how to make change, then you might want to start practicing right here because this is a good way to practice. People make fun of you because you can't make change and then walk off thinking that you're a fool. Yeah, that happens. Especially with math teachers that give you odd amounts of change just to see if you know what you're doing. And you call them a bastard when they walk off. Okay? Or they find you at low lows and tell you to go find a 5100 cent range. I've done that before. The guy never came back. I don't know if we have that. Who makes it? I said it's made by Cobalt. It's fifty one hundred. It's like sending somebody for a level bubble. There it is. Point one zero five six. Oh, yeah. Like in this class? Yeah. They're going to get harder. But this is a good introduction to, for you to do 7.1 and 7.2. Uh, if you want to wait on 7.2, that's fine. But you can at least do 7.1, which is um, uniform. Okay. Or fidgeting makes me leave, makes me think that it's time to go. So. Y'all just go ahead and I'll just make everybody here today. Hold on a second. I'm doing